Hey, today with Timothy Douglas. Timothy is a senior lecturer at Lancaster University who I've met a few times while well, he's organized uh, quite a number of conferences. And both, both Tim and myself work in the, the area of biomaterials, but we also have an interest in using uh, languages in science, which is a bit unusual. And that's what we want to talk about today, even though I know Tim speaks a lot more languages than I do. So Tim, can you maybe explain like wh where your interest in languages comes from and how, how many are you studying at the moment? Right. Well, um, mm -hmm. um, I be first, firstly, I, I'd like to mention that it may seem strange to talk about languages and science, but actually it's not that unusual to encounter scientists who speak, you know, many languages. Um, recently, um, you know, I was organizing a languages and science mm -hmm. conference here at Lancaster University, and I was delighted at the number of colleagues here that I found who could speak, you know, several languages. So there is enough critical mass to build a community. It's just we're not aware of each other. And this is something that I would really like to change. So to put people, scientists who speak several languages okay. into contact with each other, which, with each other to, in order to raise the profile. Um, I think that um, coming back to your original question, mm -hmm. um, I first, I like many British school children, I had French and then German at school. So these languages were chosen for me. But I did like German in particular very much because unlike French, it was easy <laughs> to see how, you know, it was pronounced and from how it was written. And I enjoyed it very much. Um, mm -hmm. I, at one point I did consider uh, you know, studying um, German at university, but then I ah. found, but I, I, then I realized that um, you, it would be like studying English, studying my own language, just in another language mm -hmm. with an emphasis on you know, studying literature, which didn't appeal to me. But instead, I went in the third year of my studies in chemical engineering. I went uh, to Aachen in Germany as an Erasmus student, and that was you know, a life changing experience. And so I actually liked it so much that when I finished uh, my studies in London, I went back to Germany to do a master's in biomedical engineering, which is how I started to become interested in biomaterials, which we both work on now. Um, then I became in Germany. There's a very wide range of you know languages which are offered at universities, and I became yes. interested, especially in the Slavic languages. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Right. I mean, especially um, Russian, because. There are many people um, of from the former Soviet Union who actually live in Germany, and also there's more interest uh, because of the proximity to, um, you know, to Poland and to the Czech Republic. Yeah. So I I became very interested in these languages, and in particular, I liked uh, the fact that the Slavic people, in particular, are very appreciative when you start, you know, to learn the language because it actually they it's a sign that you really are interested in their culture, and that's the nicest thing about language you know, connecting with people, you know, through their language, because it's, as, you know, Nelson Mandela once said, if you speak to a man in a language mm. he understands, that um, goes to his head. But if you speak to him in his language, that goes to his heart. And mm. this is when people say, um, why bother learning other languages if everybody speaks English? Well, then, okay, you may reach a lot of heads, but with other languages, you can also reach hearts as well, and you and you build up sort of rapport with people and relationships on which you know science is actually based. And I did uh, during university. I did have the option to actually do Spanish, um, which which I did because um, there wasn't. I wanted to prepare myself for my internship, and simply there wasn't a module on Portuguese, so I ended up <laughs> sure. with Spanish. So, so how did you manage like, to find the time to combine all of this? Do you study it by books or by traveling or by talking to people? How do you actually do this? Well, um, I just try to use uh, be an opportunist and use any mm. um, chance that I have. Regarding the, um, the question, how do you find time? Well, I think mm. by integrating a language into your everyday activities, you become, you automatically practice it. That's why scientists become good at English, in my opinion, because they are using mm. it every day. So to read articles, sometimes to write articles, to when they take part in conferences, to sometimes to communicate with people from other countries. And simply by doing this with in other languages, okay, it's a bit more effort to write an email mm. in, shall we say, Definitely. Portuguese than in yes. English. But <laughs> If, for instance, if, if an email that would take five minutes in English, 
-hmm. if it, it might take me 10 minutes to do it in Portuguese. So I've had to invest five more minutes to, but then I've gained 10 minutes of practice. So I would say by um, killing two birds with one stone, you know, use the language you know, while you're doing your science. Mm -hmm. And then thanks to the language, you know, you'll be able to do more science thanks to the better relationships that you build up with people. Yeah, so I found like when I was uh, studying languages, we also had a lot of music in it because I found when I was listening to songs, it was a lot easier to memorize or remember the words than it was with, you know, just a very dry textbook, like filling in the gaps. And when I did my Spanish course, you had like scenarios like you would go to a restaurant and you would order food. So it's almost like, you know, you're going on holiday and that worked a lot better for me, I have to say. Um, yes, I completely agree. If you can associate, you know, vocabulary and grammar with you know, real sort of experiences or experiences which you can imagine as being real, then they're connected mm -hmm. you know, in your mind with so many yes. other experiences and so they remain a part of you better. Dan kunnen we even laten zien hoeveel talen Tim wel niet spreekt. Maar Tim spreekt ook ontzettend goed Nederlands, wel een beetje met een Belgisch accent, vind ik, een, een Vlaams accent. En kun je misschien een beetje vertellen, nou, je hebt het al eerder over je Erasmus gehad, En, en hoe, hoe belangrijk het was voor, uh, ja, eigenlijk voor, om die interesse in het Duits te krijgen. Maar kun je ook een beetje vertellen wat de invloed van het wonen in het buitenland heeft gehad op, op taal en je interesse in taal? Misschien? Oh ja, well, also voor mij, uh, vroeger, also voordat ik naar het buitenland uh, ging uh, wonen, was uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, taal gewoon een academische vak op de universiteit. Ja. En uh, dus maar eigenlijk, also, toen ik in Duitsland was, een, uh, elke dag uh, gebruik van mijn Duits zo maakte mm. om uh, mensen te leren kennen uh, also, en om te reizen, also, gewoon om van het leven te genieten. Het was geen mm. also, uh, vak meer, het was een, een deel van mijn leven. Um, dus um, waarom het heel interessant is, ik vond eerlijk gezegd het leven in uh, Duitsland veel exotischer dan in het Verenigd Koninkrijk. <laughs> en dus um, nadat ik also, mijn uh, afstudeerde eigenlijk woon, dacht ik, 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 uh, ik, ik moet also, uh, alweer naar Duitsland. Island. En dus gelukkig also, vond ik een, um, uh, een, uh, een masteropleiding in München in het zuiden also, um, mm -hmm. van Duitsland. En eigenlijk uh, uh, 15 jaar zo keerde ik uh, no nooit terug naar, naar, de, naar het Verenigd Koninkrijk. Eigenlijk het heeft het mij ook de um, zelfvertrouwen gegeven om um, uh, naar het buitenland te gaan verhuizen. Ik heb also, mm. daarna echt gedacht dat is een realistische optie voor mij in het leven. En um, dus ik heb ook uh, begrepen als ik één taal uh, in één taal kan studeren, want ik uh, studeer in het Duits, uh, uitsluitend in het Duits, dan um, ik kan ik ook andere talen leren. Dus ik uh, ben begonnen met de Slavische talen, maar ook, um, uh, ik ben ook met het Nederlands begonnen, omdat ja. ik vond het was, well, eerlijk gezegd, zo een, een grappige versie van het Duits. <laughs> ik, nou, ik, ik wil daar niemand ja, zo daar be <laughs> um, beleidigen. Ik, ik heb zoveel zo respect zo voor het Nederlandse taal als voor het Duitse. Mm -hmm. Maar eigenlijk, ik ben tussen zo curieus geworden. En eigenlijk, ik, 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 ik zou willen zo toevoegen dat volgens mij eigenlijk is um, om een goede um, uh, wetenschapper te zijn, moet je toch curieus zijn. Je moet zo um, mm -hmm. uh, um, eigenlijk zo dit zo um, wens hebben om uh, zo nieuwe dingen te ontdekken en om, yeah, um, om neertalig te worden, als hij om polyglot te worden, dan je moet ook heel curieus zijn als wat de talen betreft. Je moet heel als benieuwd zijn als wat de talen betreft. Ondertussen meerdere talen geleerd, want ik weet mm -hmm. ook al een een taal heet, is het Echt altijd even afzien en dan moet je ook voor, voor jezelf in ieder geval even over je schaamte en even over die eerste barrière heen. Wordt het daarna makkelijker als je een andere taal gaat leren? Um, zeker. Wel, als je een andere taal gaat leren, dan heb je zeker meer zelfvertrouwen. Omdat je denkt, ik heb al één taal onder de knieken gekregen, mm. dus moet het wel met een andere taal lukken. Um, ook bijvoorbeeld in, um, in sommige talen, bijvoorbeeld tussen het Duits en het Nederlands bijvoorbeeld, mm -hmm. zijn er veel uh, zo overeenkomsten uh, wat de woordenschat betreft, nota grammatica. Dus het wordt ook gemakkelijker. Of bijvoorbeeld als je Frans leert en dan naar um, uh, Portugees. Of, uh, maar ook uh, een derde punt is, um, um, als je een vreemde taal spreekt, dan moet je leren om te kunnen communiceren met een beperkte woordenschat. 
En dus, dat is wel een uitdaging. Maar ik, 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 ik vind persoonlijk... Um, je hebt dus ook meer zelfvertrouwen in jezelf. Want je kunt ook... Mm. Um, je leert hoe je, um, um, je, je eigenlijk je punt kunt overbrengen. Also zonder... En, en het enorme woorden staat of keuze van uitdrukkingen die je in je moeite taal hebt. Oh, en ja. een vierde punt. Uh, je moet mm-hmm. over je schaamte heen. Yeah. Well, eigenlijk niemand spreekt zijn moeite taal also perfect, also zonder fouten. In het bijzonder, tijdens mm-hmm. dit also pandemie, moest ik heel veel um, uh, voortrachten also opnemen. En yeah. eigenlijk, toen ik de opnames bekeek, um, viel me toch op dat... Um, ik heel veel fouten uh, maak als ik Engels spreek met moedertaal. En dus denk ik, okay. oh ja, als, als ik um, uh, fouten maak in mijn moedertaal, dan moet ik, zeker, moet ik me zeker niet voor uh, fouten in andere talen schamen. Ik, dat, uh, mm-hmm. en ik denk dat de, het enige fout die je kunt maken wat belangrijk is, is niet spreken. Dat is zeker waar. Então, para a última pergunta, eu vou tentar falar português com o Tim, porque eu fiz meu estágio de Erasmus no Brasil, muitos anos atrás. Então, <risos> mas eu tenho bastante estudantes de USP, é da Universidade de São Paulo, então eu tenho oportunidade para praticar com eles. Uh, e, e Tim, você pode, poderia dar algumas situações que a língua tem uma boa influência de sua vida ou do seu trabalho? Oh, well, well um, um, há also, um, ah, also muitos, muitos um, uh, exemplos. Mm. Um, Para mim, um, um, sinceramente, um, a língua uh, mais, uh, also mais útil um, foi um, o polaco o polonês, mm-hmm. porque um, uh, eu, eu tenho uh, muitas as, colegas uh, em mm-hmm. Polônia um, e um, as minhas colaborações mm-hmm. mais importantes e um, mais um, produtivas um, um, es, um, um, são as, com um, grupos uh, em um, Uh, no Polonia, also, per esempio, um, in Krakow, uh, in, mm-hmm. in Warszawa. E, um, so, e, um, uh, todos also, os uh, anos, also, uh, um, uh, eu uh, tento um, de uh, 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 viajar um, mm-hmm. a, a no Polonia um, para participar uh, na minha um, conferência preferida. Um, também um, eu tinha uh, algumas experiências muito positivas uh, com uh, grupos uh, in, uh, um, na, na Rússia e uh-huh. um, também um, uh, na República Checa. E um, um, ainda uh, tenho colaborações uh, com uh, grupos uh, nos Paixos ba- um, Países Baixos e também in uh, in 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 Bel- Belgico. So um eu posso con- eu consigo continuar per algumas horas uh, porque um as línguas um são tão úteis. So a final question for you Tim. Um, so, as scientists, particularly those working in STEM fields that are not traditionally really into languages, can you give them any tips on how they can implement that in their daily life or in their research? Well, I, I think that the scientific world offers excellent opportunities to use languages because there are so many countries where uh, you know science is done. So I would say, you know, if you don't know where to start, you have to start somewhere. So if you're writing an email, just you know write one or two words in the language in that email and then maybe next time then you'll be able to write 
two sentences instead of one and then three sentences next time you know a, a journey of a thousand miles you know starts with a single step that's the, how the saying goes and it's true if you go to conferences and you interact with people from other countries just use a little bit of their language even if it's just one word you can still make a connection to somebody because most people don't even bother to learn one word <laughs> and and then maybe then if you keep collaborating them the next time you can use two words and then maybe the next time five words and ten words so just build it up step by step yeah and and, and the last question then one one more what's on what's on your language wish list at the moment oh well um i'm doing an experiment now um okay i, I think that um I'm, i'm teaching two modules this year and uh um one thing i notice at uni well i've noticed at universities universities like to um say that they are international places mm -hmm. but i've i've never heard anybody asking the students about you know their um a linguistic background and what languages mm -hmm. they speak so i in the two modules that i'm teaching this year i decided that i would okay. um uh, ask the students firstly what languages they were speaking and what and so, and why if they wanted to tell me it was all anonymous and then i got some really nice comments back like i'm learning mm -hmm. um you know norwegian uh, for my oh. boyfriend or i'm um, i'm learning dutch because it sounds funny <laughs> <laughs> and uh, or i i'm i'm learning korean because i i i teach taekwondo or because i mm. you know i love some of the materials there and um then i made a list of the languages that they spoke and then i asked them to select a language for me to learn because i hope myself that when you know they go to work that they will be interested you know in their colleagues and they will be interested in their clients and they'll think about learning the language of their clients and their colleagues and so i think i should try to give a good example and also um you know i hope that one student at least in the in each group will feel um more appreciated because i'm learning their language so one group decided that i would learn spanish and one has decided that i will learn hindi as well so i have my resources here so <laughs> Oh, thanks, thanks, Tim. Made some really interesting points here. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much for having me uh, on your channel. Hated.